Hi, it's Cello Handspell. One of the things that's always fascinated me about Frank Zappa's music is the way he constructed his non-tonal melodies. I've already examined uh, features of this in two of my videos, uh, Intervallic Sequencing in the Music of Frank Zappa and my analysis of Pedro's Dowry. However, today I want to look at a different feature um, of the non-tonal melodies. And that is uh, the use of recurring note collections. Now, these recurring note collections can be found in the following pieces. Now these note collections are basically a group of notes that appear across a number of pieces. For example, if you have a, a note collection in one piece and you find them in several other pieces, you can make comparisons and correlations. However, you have to give it a name. So in order to give it a name, I'm going to use a pitch class set theory. Okay, so what is pitch class set theory? Well, pitch class set theory is um, a process where you in its basic, most fundamental form, you take note names and represent them as numbers. Let's say you have all 12 notes of music lined up in a row there, from C to B, and we apply numbers to each one of those notes, starting with zero. Now, say my note collection is C, C sharp, D sharp, and E, and I find this collection in one of Zappa's pieces. In pitch class set theory, this would be represented by the numbers 0, 1, 3, 4. Reducing a collection to a number, a pitch class set, is really important. Because say, for example, you find C, C sharp, D sharp, E in one piece. In another, you find E, F, G, G sharp. That would give you 4, 5, 7, 8. Now, 4, 5, 7, 8 is the same as 0, 1, 3, 4. Because the intervallic distances between each note is exactly the same. So this 0, 1, 3, 4 is relating to the intervallic increments from the left to the right. So with E, you have 0, followed by F, which is a semitone away, then G, which is three semitones away, and then G sharp, which is four semitones away, hence 0, 1, 3, 4. So it shares the same intervallic structure, the same intervallic vector as the C, C sharp, D sharp, uh, e incarnation. So we can call both sets 0, 1, 3, 4. It's obviously much easier for me to say, oh, this is pitch class set 0, 1, 3, 4 in all pieces that share the same set rather than going, oh, in this piece it's C, C sharp, D sharp, E, and in this one it's E, F, G, G sharp. So pitch class sets uh, allow us to categorize things, put them in order, and it makes it easy to communicate similar note collections. Okay, so the pitch class set that I want to focus on in this video is 0, 1, 2, 3. Now, this particular set is rampant in Zappa's non-tonal melodies. In this extract, consisting of barely two bars, we have five 0, 1, 2, 3 pitch class sets. And you will notice that the bebop tango extract, as written in the score, is on the top line, subject to the contours and all the rest of the nuances and intricacies of the melody. And below is the reduction of certain notes within the melody to create these 0, 1, 2, 3 pitch class sets. This is unordered. And in a sense, is a kind of abstraction. You have the melody as it is in the recording, and then you're reducing uh, parts of the melody to this abstract formula. However, this abstract formula allows us to instill continuity in the analysis of these melodies. The first pitch class set identified in this extract consists of D, E, C sharp, D sharp. And you can see here where it says ordered, the notes follow the contours, the direction of the intervals. And in the next bar, it, this is the unordered representation of the same notes. As you can see, um, C sharp, D, D sharp, E makes for a pitch class set 0, 1, 2, 3. So the notes have been reordered to make the intervallic distance between each note as small as possible. 
and we've reduced the intervallic leaps as well because this is a mod 12 system. If you think of a clock, you want to place these notes on that clock face to be as close together as possible. What this collection of pitch class sets uh, are showing us is that there's a proclivity for the 0, 1, 2, 3 pitch class set. There's a proclivity for using those semitonal relationships um, in various forms, whether they're within the octave or spread out across many octaves. To further illustrate pitch class set 0, 1, 2, 3, let's have a look at it on the guitar so we get a sort of visual perspective. C, C sharp, E, E sharp. That's 0, 1, 2, now, there are a number of ways to combine these notes. There are many combinations. In maths, if you have a group of four numbers, the maximum combination you can get out of those four numbers is 24. The, the calculation is 1 times 2, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 4 is 24. So you can have a maximum of 24 combinations of a four note group. So it could be that's 1, 2, and so on and so on. Let's have a look at all 24. So as you can see, there's many possibilities, many ways you can combine um, the, this uh, four note set. However, in Zappa's music, he takes it a step further by using octave displacement. And that gives you even more variation. Of course, the octave displacements can be still reduced to the pitch class set 0, 1, 2, 3, but it creates contour, it creates intrigue and this kind of disjunctive type of uh, sound, which is characteristic of Zappa's music. But what's interesting is that if you reduce it to its basic form, to a pitch class set, it's quite straightforward. It's just, it consists of nothing more than uh, semitones. If we look at this concept in the bebop tango extract, you'll see that the first two pitch class sets have been reduced to this. But in the music, you have... So they're exactly the same notes, but they've been um, dispersed. They've been displaced by octaves. On the first pitch class set, D, E, C sharp, D sharp. In the music, D, E, C sharp, D sharp. But the D sharp is here, it's, it's dropped down. But in the music, it's F sharp, F, E, G, F sharp, F sharp, F, E, G. So those notes are really displaced and of course make it sound much more interesting. Pitch class set 0, 1, 2, 3 is quite rampant throughout. Notwithstanding note reiterations, you can find set after set in this particular extract. Sometimes they overlap. The 0, 1, 2, 3 set is pretty consistent throughout this phrase. There's octave displacement here. If we look at the triplets there, it goes from C to A all the way up to B and then back down to B flat. It's quite spread out. Another example of this is in Mo and Her's Vacation. simple set 0, 1, 2, 3, creating pitch space diversity. Here in bar 67, the, the intervallic distances are quite extravagant. You have F below middle C, uh, E, D sharp and D, spanning almost three octaves. Sometimes you can analyze Zappa's melodies um, using pitch class set 0, 1, 2, 3, 
where the notes are confined uh, to the octave, there's not much uh, displacement there. The intervals are quite close together. A very good example of this is revised music for low-budget symphony orchestra. Last four follow the same uh, the same combination. And descend by minor thirds. I'm going to attempt to sight read this phrase. particular example, the 0, 1, 2, 3 set overlaps. You can see there's an overlapping throughout the entire phrase. And so this one is really loaded with that particular set. Now for me, although I'm using pitch class set theory analysis in a kind of haphazard way, um, it seems to be the right thing to do. Um, let's face it, Frank Zappa said that he applied serialism in a haphazard way, so it stands to reason that, you know, the analyst might approach it in a similar fashion. Um, the pitch class set theory enables me to see um, uh, continuity in the, the way uh, dissonant melodies are created, the way they're constructed, and informs my own practice as a composer. In other dissonant melodies, you'll find that you can use other pitch class sets. Um, another one that uh, Zappa uses a lot is uh, pitch class set 0, 1, 3, 4, which is uh, C, C sharp, D sharp, E. And one of the most important uh, shapes and characteristics that are used from this particular set is the minor thirds of semitone apart. C to E flat, C sharp to E natural. Gives you this chord. It's uh, two minor thirds of semitone apart. So it's zero, one, three, four. As it's a four note set, the same mathematical principle applies in that there are a maximum of 24 combinations. Here is an example from Pedro's diary. We can see that the first four notes of the sextuplet, C, E flat, E, C sharp, can be reduced to pitch class set 0, 1, 3, 4, as can the fourth note of a quaver note septuplet in the next bar onwards, the E flat, E natural, G, F sharp, and then the B, G sharp, A, C is another 0, 1, 3, 4. This Bob and Dacron extract is really interesting because of the overlaps there. So if I go from the first note, and then starting from the third note, which is the, the overlapping point that then begins another 0, 1, 3, 4. And then the next bar. meeting each other midway, the actual set is interrupted by another 0, 1, 3, 4 set. And when you put them together, you just see this link of 0, 1, 3, 4 sets across the uh, bars. Now a 
final example is the first movement from Moe and Her's Vacation, and specifically the clarinet part. There are an awful lot of 0134 sets, as well as 0145. They're all combined at various points within the piece. Now, as you can see in this analysis, I've kept the intervallic direction, the ordered notes as is, and just merely put brackets on top of these specific groups of notes. Where you see the dashed line, that means that the pitch class set is not consecutive. There are other notes between the last pitch class set and the following one. This is one of the, the main fundamental building blocks in this particular piece. So the use of pitch class set 0134 and 0145 are quite significant in the first movement of Moe and Herb's Vacation. Now, this particular piece is a contentious piece. It's not easy to listen to. However, I find it endlessly fascinating. Um, I find it interesting the way uh, Zappa has used uh, techniques almost surreptitiously to establish continuity. If you listen very carefully to the piece, there is a lot of continuity, particularly in the second and third movements, but it's kind of hidden, it's buried. You have to really look for it. Um, so it's, for me, it's an interesting listen. You know, it's not something that I would put my feet up and relax to. It's an educational listen. Yeah.